talk in our book about uh, an affection that legislators have for legislative life and the special character of relationships that develop in, in institutions sometimes. And I have a special affection for this place. So every time I come back here, I, I remember that this was this is the most elegant venue in the university. <laughs> <laughs> and I think also how big my room was. <laughs> I, also, I also want to uh, to thank SUNY Press because this is a, uh, putting aside what's in the book, it's a very well made book. And uh, in a time where people are reading machines uh, more and more and books less and less, uh, I, I think there are still some of us who, who like to hold a well made book in their hand and, and, and feel its weight and, and observe uh, the uh, care with which it was made. So uh, I, I'm very appreciative of Speaking, uh, in, I have five things to talk about. I probably won't do them all in any great length, but we can do questions and try to answer uh, five questions. This is especially for Blair, who has not yet read the book as required. And I told him after he was done, uh, he wouldn't have to because he didn't know what's in it. Uh, not everything that's in it, though, Blair. You may encounter me again, so be careful. <laughs> Well, why was the book written? Uh, what is its objective? How is it organized, conceived, and presented? What is in it and what is not in it? And uh, what does it conclude? Uh, we've all already heard, this book is written in the first person, and when I joined Dan in this project, uh, that was one of my conditions, you know, that, that we wouldn't change it from being in the first person, because the whole idea of its accessibility and attraction is based upon people getting inside the mind insofar as they can of a legislator and see how a legislator saw his experience. We don't propose that, uh, that there is such a thing as a typical legislator. Uh, and we, we understand and know that uh, different legislators from different places and different backgrounds and different, different uh, uh, experiences uh, will, have, will, will be shaped and, and their perceptions will be shaped. They'll bring different things to the task, but we do think that a legislator's perception makes the book interesting as long as it's not uh, uh, sort of a, a self-serving autobiography. And there was a great effort in the original draft to avoid that, and I think that has been avoided. So that was a condition of entry. And the idea was to capture legislative life, which we regard as fundamentally interesting, to make the legislature accessible, uh, to, to debunk the notion that the legislature, that to, we acknowledge that the legislature is potentially a corrupting environment in that insofar as members are treated in a certain special way and they're away from home and, and so on, those things that you've heard about uh, being north of Bear Mountain. But, but, the, uh, but we, we, we do argue that, uh, that uh, there's nothing intrinsically corrupt about legislative life. Uh, this is not a, a defense of the legislature, as my daughter uh, uh, Elizabeth indicated when she uh, interviewed me on television and, and Dan on television. We didn't set out to defend the legislature. We set out to make the point that legislatures are at the core of representative government and that uh, uh, we, we need to commit to uh, legislatures as institutions if we are to be in this large society going uh, democratically. And so our unhappiness with the performance of particular institutions at particular times or particular people who don't meet our expectations in their behavior uh, should not uh, obscure or, or, delude, or draw us away from a, a fundamental commitment to effective uh, legislatures. Um, so, uh, uh, second, this is a, a book that is both descriptive and analytic, and uh, Dick Nathan, who was a, sort of a boss and mentor and colleague of mine, I don't know quite how to characterize it, many years here, and a co-author, used to talk about an iron rod that has to run through a book in order for the book to be useful and interesting. And so uh, we talk about value clashes, fundamental value, convergence and divergence. Uh, we talk about uh, legislators as pragmatists. We talk about inside and outside politics and how they converge and how they diverge. So there are some organizing ideas, all, all toward the goal of, of not being uh, a simple personal description. And a lot of those ideas that were not mine, but, but Dan's, I, I found them. I might have agreed with some, disagreed with some. I certainly removed 
a lot of hard to understand legal philosophy, but it's true. <laughs> he took out the boring stuff. I, 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 I reached a certain stage in life where I'm reasonably confident if I can't understand it, probably you know, <laughs> others may not be able to understand it. It's possible that that would be true. Uh, we also uh, view this, the, we have the notion in the book that uh, self interest needs to be embraced and harnessed. In other words, it's a Minnesotian idea uh, that uh, self interest is not intrinsically. We have seen manifestations of self-interest in our legislature that are at least uh, worthy of deep uh, skepticism and sometimes outrage. Uh, and uh, this is not a book about recent events or a reaction to recent <coughs> events, although we kept writing as, uh, as uh, extraordinary and unusual things kept happening because we figured that nobody would buy the book if we ignored. Uh, and they were interesting events. I'm reminded of one of my first, when one of my most, very most important intellectual uh, moments when my book on Nelson Rockefeller was was uh, published in '79, and uh, I called my dad and told him in the, in the most busiest season of his business that he had to come down to Fifth Avenue and have a look at the window of, of, uh, of, uh, of the bookstore. And uh, by the time he got down there, the book, the uh, book was out of the window. <laughs> and, and, and the reason was that it didn't sell as well as it might have because it didn't uh, go into the circumstances of the governor's passing. <laughs> uh, that is that you, that, 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 that you can't completely keep up with events as you write a book, but you can do your best and we, we, tried, to, we tried to do that. So, uh, uh, and we talk about the relationships among institutions, especially the courts and the legislature. Less really the executive and the legislature, or the courts and the legislature. And uh, I made a list in a, in a forward, some of you might look at it, 20 points that political scientists might pay attention to in this book. You know, that is, there are issues that political scientists discuss on how legislatures work that are addressed in the book, but they're not organized in accord with that list. They occur in the course of the writing. Uh, so that's the uh, third point. What, what it, how is the book structured? Well, we have process discussions. How does the legislature work? How do you get elected? What are the considerations? How do you relate to the meeting? We have uh, policy discussions focused on Dan's interests and role in the legislature, mostly related to criminal justice, criminal procedure, but with some, some focus on social issues. And then we have some analytic discussions. You know, what does all this mean? Um, we have, we differed from time to time, and I signed the last chapter at the risk of people believing that that's all I did. You know, the last <laughs> but, <laughs> but I signed that because we agreed that we disagreed on some things and that I ought to say that, you know, having come in later in, in the game. Um, this is not a comprehensive book. It, misses, it doesn't discuss a lot of important things. For example, people interested in the budget process won't find long descriptions of budgeting dysfunction. Um, because Dan wasn't on the fiscal committee. Talk about from time to time some problems with the borrowing, for example, to people who are selling prisons to get money, you know, which is not something we particularly approve of. But duh, uh, it's not about that. It is not. It is a sympathetic perspective on the legislature, uh, and it says in one place that the legislature does some things well. And I'm happy to talk about those because that's meant. And it places the context of hostility to our legislature in the place. Hostility to, to our legislature in the context of, of how people regard legislatures generally in this country, which is not, in fact, positive. In fact, it's quite negative, especially state legislature. Uh, now, uh, in this angry moment, uh, as Dan said, we have to understand the fundamental importance of the legislative institution in our society, and we have to find friends for it at the same time as we try to correct the great pathologies that have confronted us in New York. They are extreme. Uh, and all, I, I, I started to try to think of alternatives to the legislature, and I certainly the director of democracy has manifested through the initiative is uh, is, is not a, uh, I think a desirable alternative. Uh, the various ideas of combining technology with institutional life to uh, somehow uh, uh, democratize decision making uh, to me have, have fundamental for a lot of writing emerging on that and fundamental flaws. Tribune or tribunal, a man on a white horse, always been until now in New York, uh, is entirely unappealing to me. And, and uh, the degree to which our election is turning to that uh, idea once again is troubling. Uh, perhaps we can talk about that. So uh, I think that uh, we 
haven't been adopted, so they're worthy of good discussion and, and uh, consideration for action. So I'm happy to join in and answer questions. I'm turning the floor back over to you.